So, uh, first, we'd like to welcome you to the ICT in Education Conference. And first, would you like to give us a, a brief hint about what BECTA is and what does it do in the UK? BECTA is the uh, government's lead agency on uh, the use of technology in education. So, its function really is to try and uh, help government with its overall strategy, with its policy, but also then to take that policy and implement it and to help schools then be able to understand. So, it, uh, for example, will set standards in uh, technical standards but also pedagogical standards. It will uh, uh, provide information for teachers so it um, does both the strategic level but also right down into the classroom to be able to help people as to how they ought to use the technology that will make a real difference. A lot of research put into that to make sure that what we are saying is actually backed up by real evidence in practice. Okay, so the first thing you mentioned in the presentation was that future is already here but it's not widely distributed. So comparing the, the, the developed world with the Arab world, how do you think this statement applies to the developing versus the developed countries? Is it true that developing countries are not having the resources or having, not having the skills or the knowledge or what's the situation as you view it? I think it's uh, not um, just a comparison between the developed and uh, developing countries. It's uh, very much within developed countries as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, what I've been trying to describe today is that the uh, way in which it impacts in education is very much down to not just the technology but also the teacher, the leadership in the school and the system as a whole. So it brings those things together. Now that can be quite easy for some developing countries to actually implement uh, quicker and in a more structured way than some of the developed countries. So what we will what we'll have in the, in the UK for example, although um, all of our schools are engaged in this program, uh, some of the description that I was talking about in terms of uh, our leading schools, we're, we're probably got about 20% of our schools at that level. So we still have a significant challenge to get the 80% up to the level of that 20%. Uh, at the same time, uh, that's about taking people on a journey. That journey can equally be uh, a, a journey for developed countries just as much as for the, the developed, so uh, for developing countries just as much as for the developed countries. So uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily see it as a significant issue um, that we're all starting from different places. I think people can move faster. I think there is a challenge in terms of resources that are available. For many countries, actually making those resources available are, is really difficult. Uh, it's a decision about where you put your uh, sort of finances and um, sort of how you see education. Certainly one of my other messages today was very much that education is part of the key to the future economy. So the way in which we invest in our education will determine how many resources we have in the future in terms of the economic uh, standing of the country. So I still see education as really important in that agenda, but I recognise that for some countries uh, investing in the sort of computer infrastructure is more challenging than for others. Uh, some people may view that uh, ICT being in integrated in the educational system may eliminate or lessen the impact of the human touch or the teacher's role in the education process. So what do you think when ICT is fully integrated in an educational system, whatever the country is, whether the role w of teachers and the, the human interaction between teachers and students will be affected negatively or positively in, in this area? Teachers uh, will be more important than ever before. Uh, the role of a teacher will change, but the need for the teacher is greater. The uh, experience that you would have is um, teachers really have to understand education and the education process. In the past, we've had a situation where uh, teachers may well have known more than the pupil. So, the process of education has been a simple transference of I have knowledge, I'm going to pass it on to you. And you pass that knowledge on. The challenge in the future is that that knowledge is available. That information is available. However, the understanding of it, the ability to cons help people get the concepts, the uh, ability to know uh, how a child is progressing and what the input should be that moves that child on, and their understanding of how people learn, that is really, really important and more important in the future than ever before. So the role of the teacher will change, but 
the need for the teacher and indeed the skills of the teacher are going to be even more significant than they are currently. Uh, your take on the uh, digital natives concept was really interesting because you argued that being uh, for a manager, for a school manager to be a digital native could, be, could have a negative impact because he thinks that he's not subject to other, um, I mean, suggestions from younger generations who can have their input, but he disregards them. So can you tell us about your argument for, about this concept and make it clear to the people? Well, I think the, the challenge is that young people come with a perception of what's available to them and what they can do. So the, um, the ability, let, let me take a, a, a very simple example. Young people today will expect to collaborate. So if you're doing a particular piece of work at home, you may well talk to your friends about it. You could go onto the internet, you could get in more information, you could go onto uh, one of the social networking sites, you could share with colleagues in different parts of the world even uh, about what you're doing on your particular project. Now, a traditional model within a school of an assessment process would say, uh, if you talk to other people, you're cheating. All right. Now, <coughs> that's fine in the sense that if what you want to test is the ability for someone to have memorized something for themselves, then absolutely that's the way forward. But if you then ask what is the skills necessary in industry, they will talk about teamwork. They'll talk about the development of critical thinking. They'll talk about the ability to be able to criticize others positively and to receive criticism and adapt that in your own world. Now, if we in education are trying to develop that process and enable people to move on to that, we have to allow people to do that within our school system. Now, it isn't difficult to allow them to do it because they do it all the time. It's only difficult if you think that you are the only person in control rather than letting people actually sort of be able to have that. So again, the role of the teacher in that situation, it's not just about the teacher having all the power, all the control and passing on that information, it's about the teacher enabling that learning to take place and the discussions that may go with that and that's a big challenge. Uh, one of the research results you found that ICT can help improve attitudes and behaviour, so can you elaborate on this point? The uh, research that we've done uh, looked at the, a whole range of different learners using technology and how they would sort of bring that back into the classroom uh, and their knowledge. And we, we've got lots of uh, examples of uh, children being more motivated uh, to learn and uh, obviously uh, people who are more motivated tend to pay more attention. There's lots of evidence to show that um, uh, children stay on task longer. So, um, uh, and lots of evidence to show that people who stay on task longer actually uh, achieve better. So, the, the evidence would, su would suggest that the use of technology uh, enables young people to engage better with the learning than would otherwise be the case. And because they're engaged in it, they behave better. Um, I mean, anecdotally, we've got a number of things that would illustrate that. I mean, one school uh, that I used to uh, advise in Birmingham, uh, in the UK uh, had a breakfast club for its um, teenage uh, boys who they found really difficult, it was a very difficult area and they found really difficult in terms of their behaviour and control. Mm. You had teenage boys turning up at two hours before the start of the school day in order to get into school to utilise the technology because if you didn't turn up two hours early you didn't get onto one of the computers that was available. All right, now having that sort of why on earth with these t teenage boys who were difficult and problems most of the day turn up early to learn yeah. they were really interested in learning mm -hmm. what the teacher had to do was to inspire them in some way mm -hmm. and finding that thing that turns them on is really key technology can help with that it's mm -hmm. not the only thing but it can help with that so how can ICT help parents get more involved in the progress of the children and into the education process uh, generally well, one of the key messages that we, we have from all the evidence, again, is that the uh, engagement of parents in their learning helps the children in terms of their achievement. So we're really trying to look at how do we help parents to get engaged? How do they know what's happening? 
What we've uh, tried to do is to develop the concept of learning platforms in schools. The learning platform being a sort of intranet, but it's available outside of the school, so accessible from home. And we've had examples in the uh, one of the leading schools in the UK, for example, that's taken this forward. Um, teachers and parents, rather, at uh, home can check at any point to see whether their child's in school. Uh, after they turned up in the morning when they sent them off, whether they've been registered, they can find out what their timetable is for the day. They can, uh, if the child has had an issue during the day which has resulted in some form of um, uh, sanction uh, because they've been misbehaving, then that's recorded and the parent can know about it and can have a chat with their child when they come home in the evening and say, why did you get into trouble today? The child can't say, hey, I was good, I had nothing happened right, because the evidence is there. In the same way, if the child is actually rewarded in school, uh, the parent can say, I see you've got a merit today, really good, well done, congratulations. Um, the results of tests are available to the parents, so they can see what's available. Right down to, um, uh, we've taken this to the point where there are some challenges about uh, what we're doing, but uh, for example, uh, in one, this particular school I'm thinking of, they also, because they have a cashless um, system that records what the child has bought at lunchtime, they can put online what the child ate at lunchtime. Right now, on the one hand, um, you know, you say, well, why on earth would that matter? Well, we have a problem in the UK with obesity and with a lot of children eating the wrong sorts of things. So when the child comes home and says, um, I didn't have anything for lunch today, uh, and the mother says, well, you know, uh, or the, the father says, well, you know, uh, in that case, you know, here's a nice big bowl of chips for you, right? Uh, they can now sort of check and say, well, you actually, you had pizza, food and chips for lunch. Right, so I don't think you should have pizza and chips tonight again. We should try something else. Um, now, you know, for a lot of children, um, when you look at that as a total picture, they understand why that's happening. On the other hand, there is a bit where children are saying, uh, and this is the balance we have to draw, actually I have my own private time as well, and what I eat for lunch is something that's up to me and not up to parents. So managing that and managing that understanding is something that schools are going to have to get to cope with as well as to what they make available, and that's a choice for the school and the community. One of the IT techniques you've mentioned is the interactive whiteboard as well as the video conferencing. So can you tell us how these... Uh, systems or techniques can really make a difference in the educational process? One of the early things that we discovered um, was the ability to use um, uh, technology for whole class teaching. Now that can be simply at the level of projecting what might be on a computer and for a teacher to talk through it. Where the interactive whiteboard comes into its own is the ability for the teacher to have that uh, as a um, part and parcel of their resources in the, in the classroom so they can call on it at any time. And because of its interactivity, not only can the teacher engage with it, but also the pupils can as well. So we have um, many sort of examples where children will come up and actually do things um, with the teacher in terms of changing what the rest of the class actually sees. Uh, and that engages the children again in a much bigger way than would otherwise be the case. And I think, uh, it's a, you know, in a way, it's about taking the traditional sort of um, chalkboard uh, which perhaps was a two-dimensional uh, experience for children into now a sort of three or four-dimensional experience in terms of not only does it have uh, video and uh, moving and uh, parts etc but it also has the ability to be interactive uh, as, as part of that and for children to actually change what would actually be happening uh, and, I, and again it's, it's not in itself the technology is of no value how the teacher uses it is what makes it really sort of effective one of the key points in your uh, presentation was Wikipedia. Tell us how, wh whether Wikipedia can be a credible educational tool or source, and then how you view, how you view its importance. Is it really uh, an important educational resource or, or not? My, my point about Wikipedia was um, um, twofold, really. One, that it's um, peer-moderated, and so it's, it's about being live, available, and uh, changing... And the second point was that uh, because it's universal and having more information than any uh, single book, um, but the challenge is, wh is whether or not that knowledge that you're receiving is actually accurate because it's been put up by other people um, rather than actually being edited and uh, amended by academics. 
Now, for me, the, that that, is, that presents uh, both a challenge but also an opportunity. The challenge clearly is to make sure young people are aware that it may not be true. Uh, but that's an opportunity as well, because how do you find out if it's true? Uh, so, um, yes, you might well take your Wikipedia and uh, as a first point of contact. It gives you information. It probably is uh, accurate. The, it's more accurate. I think uh, the latest research would say that 90% plus of the articles on there are absolutely accurate. I think it's probably even higher than that. Uh, so more than likely you've got something that's accurate. But it will give you clues as to where else you might go to actually check out. So part of the challenge is to how do you get people to understand? Um, you need to know where the source is. Um, you need to know who it is that's saying something as well as what it is they're saying and whether or not the quality of that is something that you can believe and go with. Um, I, it, it's, a, it's a challenge for education as a whole. There, there's a, um, an e example given in the uh, colleague um, Professor Stephen Heppel uh, makes a comment about where people worry about children copying on the internet, for example, in the same way. So they, they might uh, be given a, a project or a piece of homework to do and then they, might, uh, they just copy off the internet. Uh, yeah, big challenge. So, but that's about what the teacher is asking. Instead of saying to um, a child, go and write an essay on this topic, say to the child, go and find five essays already written and criticise them, say which one's good, which one's bad. Because you won't find that on the internet, but you will find the five essays. All right? Now that's the challenge. How do you take people to a different level? That's critical thinking, it's of higher order thinking than just actually writing the essay. So actually you're do asking the children to do far more than would otherwise be the case. But you can now do that because you have the technology available. And it's about education beginning to understand that and move forward. One of the interesting things, I wondered why YouTube was blocked in some schools. So why is that? Well, I, th I think uh, a number of schools are concerned about the internet generally and the fact that it has um, uh, available access to many sites that are inappropriate for young people. And all of our schools in the UK have uh, some form of filtering system uh, adapted, so both in terms of technology filtering but also in terms of um, sort of principles of access and the way in which children are educated. Those two things go together. But the uh, use of things like YouTube uh, again, because it's a, a, a sort of universal, sort of uh, available, you can have clips on there that are uh, really significant, really mind, uh, help you think, help you develop. Um, used in a number of, I've used clips myself and didn't show one today, but I, uh, I, I've often used clips of that nature. However, there are clips on there that you wouldn't necessarily want children to see. Um, and the, the challenge again is how do you develop your system so that uh, you either have, uh, as a matter of uh, process, of education, the ability to access that rather than closing it down. So many schools in the UK take the easy option of closing it down. I think that easy option is one that is not sustainable in the longer term. You actually have to enable people to access these tools because they are really powerful tools, but you have to be able to help them to do it in a, a way in which it can be really sort of effective for them and secure for them and safe for them. One of the points also you've, you've covered is peer support and whether, what, techno what technology can help in this. So can you elaborate on this? Well, the peer support uh, um, it works in a n number of different ways, uh, but uh, one of the initial things is that quite often children learn uh, by teaching. So if you're in a situation where you have to, your friend asks you a question, by trying to explain the answer, you actually learn more yourself in the explanation of that and you actually again take yourself to a higher level in terms of thinking. So the, the idea of peer support and being able to set problems where people share with each other uh, as w within their own sort of uh, classroom community is one in itself. But then you've got the broader community of the rest of the world. Uh, and there are a whole series of um, uh, sites now which you can use to get support. Uh, some of which are teacher supported, some of which are expert supported and others are just simply peer support in that, that environment. Uh, and we've, in the UK we've got a, a number of um, uh, secure um, social networking sites that are moderated uh, but do challenge children to actually think and uh, improve their educational uh, opportunities as well. And um, that they are very popular uh, with, with the children themselves. So, you know, ch children and learners um, do want to learn.
Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the, the issue is what is it that they want to learn? Yeah. Uh, and how do we, you know, are we always just going to try and control that? Or are we going to try and steer it? So our final, our final question would be, when ICT is integrated in many schools, whatever the country is to, are there any drawbacks or issues of concern that school heads should be putting in consideration whenever they think of having their schools IT, ICT integrated? No. <laughs> I suppose, uh, <laughs> um, I, don't, I, I think generally... Um, the advantages will always outweigh the disadvantages. Uh, clearly, uh, there are a, a range of changes that will be taking place when you have ICT integrated. Those changes will always present challenges. So, um, the opportunity for children to uh, both uh, use but also misuse the technology is one that, yes, schools are going to have to address. They have to address that through education, uh, as well as through trying to keep children safe and secure within the environment that they're in. So there are technical solutions, but there are more likely the sort of human relationship solutions about how children should behave anyway. And behaving, there are big issues about how, ch how children will behave in an online world, uh, and they're not much different, but they're very, they're, they, are, uh, they can have significantly larger impact in an online world than in a uh, sort of real uh, environment. So yes, there are a whole range of things which uh, a school principal, a school head teacher, a school system needs to ensure uh, in order to keep their children safe and secure in, in that environment. Uh, there are challenges for teachers in terms of the way in which children will learn the information that they have available to them, uh, their expectations of the system. Um, but in terms of overall, uh, this is about saying um, to young people, you want to learn and we want to create the environment in which you can learn. Um, and making it so inspiring and so um, exciting that, you know, the issues of behavior go away because in that environment for that minute they they are totally absorbed in what they're trying to do we'd like to thank you so much for your valuable insights and it was really an interesting presentation and interview thank you very much thanks a lot